you everybody for coming. This is an awesome turnout and a great space. And thanks. This is my very first time attending uh, this session down here. So thanks to Lisa and Karen for all of the uh, hard work they put in and making this presentation. If it's good, it's because of them. And if it's bad, it's my fault. So uh, all right. With, with that, I'm going to jump in. So um, in four more months, actually, it's between five and eight months. And it depends on me meeting some threshold conditions I'm going to talk to you to talk about in a minute. I'm going to be going to a camp, and it's a seven and a half day camp, essentially. It's run for both civilians and for people entering special forces, particularly Navy, Navy SEALs. And the camp is split up as five 18-hour days, uh, where essentially they just beat you mercilessly for 18-hour days. But it's, it's, it's log PT, it's running around in the surf, it's yoga, it's meditation, it's, it's journaling. It's a whole bunch of things you wouldn't expect. Uh, 18 hours a day, five days, and then at the end of it, the culminating event is 50 hours straight through, and it's a civilian equivalent of what is called Navy SEAL Hell Week, which is 120 hours straight through with no sleep. So this is 60 hours straight through, no sleep, around the clock. Uh, basically, it's a team building event. So <laughs> this scares the crap out of me, because <laughs> it's going to be a really, it's a very, very difficult thing, and I know some people who've been through it. So. Uh, when I set out to do this, I realized this was so far beyond where I was in my training that I really had to make some big changes, learn a lot, and try to figure out how to even take this on because it was just too far beyond where I was. So in order to explain how I got there and kind of what I learned about tools and QS along the way, uh, I want to back up a step and talk about two big principles, two big stories that sort of informed a lot of my sport life. One is uh, Carl Jung's Four Archetypes of Ambition, which is that he believed that uh, people went through four phases. The first phase was their athletes, where they said, how pretty am I, how, you know, how strong am I? And the second phase being the warrior, which uh, subsumes the athlete phase, but also in the warrior phase they say, who's my competition, how do I best them, how do I compete against them? The next phase, he believed, was the statesman phase, where you have the capabilities from the first two phases, but now you're starting to say, how do I take everything I've learned in my athletics and in my warriorhood, how do I serve? How do I bring my skills to others and serve my community and my people? And eventually there's the spirit phase, which is that idea you've probably heard of, you know, are, how do you come to the conclusion that you're a spiritual being having a human experience? I'm really going to be talking about the first three. I'm nowhere near this, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. And the second big thing that kind of hit me in my training, this was probably 10, 15 years ago, I remember reading this quote and just being completely slammed, uh, surprised by the power of this quote, which is Heinlein's statement that specialization is for insects and humans are meant to be generalists. I'm not going to wait, you can find this quote later. If you just Google specialization is for insects, you'll find that quote. So uh, my, my sport life sort of went, it's a bit of an eye chart, but I'm going to just walk it through in four phases. My early years, I really just picked up sports. So I cycled, I rode, I ran, whatever. I did. I picked a couple of things, martial arts, I did those things. And then I jumped into thinking, I really want to combine these things. I want to do adventure racing where you run and you ride and you paddle and you climb and you do them all together with a team. And so that became a lot more fun. How do I combine all these sports? In the next phase, I realized that actually all the things I was doing were part of a bigger whole. So I looked into things like uh, natural movement and something called MoveNet where essentially they would say, these are all just primitive skills we should have. We should be able to lift and row and climb and fight and swim and do all of those things as part of a bigger system of movement. So that became kind of a whole era. And then beyond that, kind of the last three or four years, really began to have my eyes open to the fact that it's not just about the physical. It's about the physical, the mental, the emotional, the creative, the spiritual. So if I can bring all of those together into my training, so now I've taken a single sport, I've taken multi-sports, I've put them in a whole movement system, and then thought, it's not just physical, it's physical plus all of these things. So that led me to being abused by a good friend of mine, Bo, uh, and all of his uh, Special Forces buddies. Bo is a Fort Mo first Marine recon. Uh, he and his buddies are associated with something called Go Rock, which we're involved with, where we go out and basically do civilian military-style events. And uh, we spent a lot of time cold, wet, and sandy, carrying our buddies, <laughs> carrying really heavy logs. That thing was extremely <laughs> heavy. That took us like three hours to move a half a mile. It's a good team building event, as they call it. And, uh, and covering each other with sand. We call that sugar cookies. 
And so we do these things. This is another uh, Special Forces operator, a really great guy, Devin. And you know, we get through the end. Now these things run 12 hours through the night, 50 pounds on our pack plus 50 to 100 pounds of stuff on top of our backs. And when we finish, this was last weekend actually, two weekends ago, this was our class finishing. Uh, in fact, on the day that City Council's Board of Supervisors uh, declared an International Go Rock Challenge Day, so that's kind of cool for us. And so I, I realized I wanted to do more and more of these things. And so I decided to build a training plan. When you do one of these events, you get these little badges. So it's kind of like collecting Boy Scout badges. So I thought, well, I'm going to collect a whole bunch of them. I'm going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff. And so I did, I did the first five. I've got three more coming. And the big scary one is this one here that's going to happen. It's going to be the seven or eight day event. And the idea being that as I aggregate all these skills, and then I can also add on top of that some other skills like first aid and community emergency response, kind of disaster response, to eventually be able to work with folks like this, the Team Rubicon folks, where uh, these are military and medical and civilians who work in disaster response. So it's kind of about aggregating skills as well as community service capabilities. So back to my story. So I'm going to be doing this event. Uh, it's very scary. I don't, you know, I was trying to figure out how to get there. So the first thing I did is I went and found some good coaches. These are three former SEALs. Um, Mark Devine is in uh, Encinitas, California. Brad is in Florida, and Phil Black is also in Florida. Uh, all three of them served uh, between five and twenty years in the SEALs. I uh, started working with them. I read everything I could get my hands on. I talked to every SEAL. I, I read everything I could possibly find. I probably watched fifty hours of YouTube. Uh, tried to find everything I could find on. So how do you train for this stuff? Because it just seemed crazy. Put together a training plan that scared me silly. Um, and it has things in here that you probably wouldn't expect. You know, yoga, visualization, breathing practices, things like that, that I didn't expect to find when I started this program. Changed my diet. I was on a paleo diet. I switched to something that had uh, paleo plus a lot more carbohydrates. I can talk about that afterwards. And then I started to look at the tools. And I realized the tools were really broken up into sort of performance tools and lifestyle tools. And then I said, well, how do they all connect? And this was the crazy part. I'm happy to share this with you guys after because it's an eye chart. But I realized they were clustering into you know, ecosystems. And some of them connect and some of them don't. And this is kind of the tricky part. So again, I'm happy to share that with you later because it's an eye chart. So what I realized is there were a bunch of things I didn't want to use. I tested them all and I got rid of them. Uh, you know, the Nike fuel band, I wrecked three of them in three weeks. So they just kept taking them in the ocean, they would just get destroyed. So, uh, they, you know, they gave me a fourth one, I'd give it away. And uh, I'm pretty hard on my toys. And so then I did settle out on, you know, a lot of these key things I'm using, which is the, the Garmin and all of the uh, you know, Withing Scale Fitbit, I'm sure you're familiar with, and things like Wellness FX, we blood work. So a lot of the informational stuff I won't, I won't cover Fitbit here. Fitbit handles seawater? Uh, in, if you put it in a Ziploc bag, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've aggregated all of this data into uh, this thing here called Training Peaks. And this is my weekly and monthly dashboard. And I can look at everything. I've pulled all the data from all the sources and I've pulled it into something called Training Peaks. So that becomes my master record. And so I can go back and do analysis on it. And I can even look at a single workout. And I can look at heart rate zones. I can look that I rode. To the gym, I had a transition, I did a workout, I had a uh, cool down, I had a workout, I had a cool down, I had a workout, a cool down, and a ride. That was a four and a half hour day. I probably slept for six weeks. So, what have I learned? Well, you learn a lot when you're sitting in the surf cold with your friends. Um, for me, it was about figuring out what my mission was, which is be fit, be capable, be skilled, be able to be of service. From there, I picked a big scary goal, which is go do this seven day, eight day event. Uh, from there, that I had to have tests to prove that I'm getting ready to be able to accomplish this. And so I've got a series of checklists and tests that I'm, I have to meet before I go do this. And then in order to achieve those, I have daily micro goals. I might have to beat my mile time by five seconds today or by tomorrow. So I've, I've gone all the way from my mission all the way to my daily performance. Surround yourself with friends when you're doing something like this. It helps. Mental training is critical. Visualization, breathing has been unbelievably powerful in this and just uh, paying attention to mental state. And all the basics. Get lots of sleep, eat good food, take care of your body, and simplify your tools so that they don't distract you. And that's it. That's
So I guess seven and a half minutes. Okay, so you heard a really powerful presentation. Are there any questions for the citizen Navy SEAL? Yes? So what, what, uh, what, what benefit have you really driven out of having the data and being able to look at it? Like, what, what does that let you do that you never wasn't able to do? Yeah, so the question was around what, yeah, so the question was around what was the benefit that I've seen so far from looking at the data. Um, I've seen some really interesting patterns. The very, very earliest one I saw was my, my sleep was horrendous back in a, an earlier phase of a startup I was working on, and I literally I was getting four hours a night, so I was looking at a lot of my sleep data, and just using it as a game, you know, can I improve it, can I improve it in every, you know, both time and quality. So that helped um, looking at my weight. We spend a lot of time in the water, and I, I, I get hypothermic when I look at the ocean. <laughs> so my, for me, it's about having to actually add body fat and add um, lean muscle mass. So I track that every day, and I look at it, and I've had to up my food. So it's been really helpful to be able to look at the trends and the patterns across food, weight, um, food composition, uh, and those are probably the big ones. I mean, have, have you distilled from that rules or laws like says, here's how I can put on fat. I've discovered something I never would have known before. That's why I do this and this, but don't do that. I get this result. Um, nothing that was new and surprising because I sort of knew what to do. Yeah. It was just a matter of doing it and testing, make sure that it worked. Okay. Yeah. What would you visualize? So visu uh, the question is, what would you visualize? Um, well, one of the most common things would be actually visualizing graduation from this event. What does it feel like? What's the weather like? What's happening? Where are we? How many people are in the team? What's, what's being said? What's the ceremony that's happening? Uh, what does it feel like? So I feel like I've already been there. And other things I might visualize might be uh, log PT, the, you know, dealing with the logs, or being in the surf and being cold and, and knowing that it's okay and I can sit there and be there with my team and not freak out and run down the beach and say I quit. Mental movies? Uh, yeah, I create and I create them. So the point being, so that when you're there in the future, you already you already feel like you've been there. And, yeah, in, in this, this uh, little sea of personal data that you're collecting here, what lessons might you draw for for applying, applying this this level of data for building for building team sense in some way, for for dealing with people that are like you and for people that aren't like you at this level of personal examination, but combining it to, to mutually I'm going to try and rephrase that question. So, you, if, given that there's this amount of data, is there a way to use? Let me try this. Is there a way to use this kind of data collection to build a better team? Even though some people may collect that data and others may not collect that data. No. <laughs> Short answer. I think because like I'm the data geek in the team, right? So I'm the guy who does all this stuff. The rest of the guys just show up and say, "Point me at the logs." Uh, and I'll go lift them for 12 or 48 hours. Uh, so we're pretty different that way. The, the team building comes in, the shared suffering, uh, the, the, the being pointed at things you look at and you say, I can't possibly do that. And then the team does it and goes, wow, we didn't think we could do that. So it actually comes more, for, it's forged through the, the difficulty of the tasks. Oh, next. To, to follow up on the visualization, um, are, are there, things that you could quantify, do you ever quantify while you are visualizing? Question is, do I ever quantify while I'm visualizing? No, I'm busy visualizing, I think. Right. Uh, so I'm not what, sure. What, what I, so if there's an end state, yes. what I hear a lot of what you're talking about is doing, oh, here's the outcome, here's the graduation, sure. or here's the ocean, or whatever, yeah. would your, if you, uh, I don't even know if this is possible, but it would it be, if you could get your metrics to simulate what that experience might be, the, the end state that you're desiring, would that help you get there better? I, I'm, I'm just making the question out. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure how to answer the question. I think what he's saying visualizing A, you're visualizing data. What the data that you want, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying or visualize the, what number you want to get to. Oh, Maybe. I see, okay. Yeah, so to, would it help to visualize the data that would match the experience? Yeah. Is that yeah. close? Yeah. Um, I don't think it would because the visualization, at least what I've learned, something's ringing. Uh, the visualization, at least the tools and techniques that I've been taught are, it's really about immersing yourself in the emotional experience. And data is not that emotional, right, for most of us. So for me, it would be about 
putting myself in a particular place, envisioning that whole scene and smelling it and feeling it and thinking about what it feels like and what does it feel like to, you know, to be there with my friends or my family or whatever else. So it's all about you know, putting yourself in that emotional state so you can recall it later.